The bird is freed. Let the good times roll. That's how chief twit, also Tesla CEO, Elon Musk and the world's richest individual announced that he's finally taking over Twitter. This was the video he posted yesterday with a pun and the caption saying, let it sink in. I'm finally here. Well, it is sinking in, especially for former Twitter executives. Three of them were sacked today, including the CEO Parag Agarwal, who was, as per reports, escorted out of the building. Actually told, get up, it's time to leave. Uh, it's been a long twist and turn of Musk finally getting to Twitter. The question is, what does he do with it? Because remember, he wanted Twitter because he thought they were not allowing free speech to flourish. They were censoring some people uh, and not censoring others. Uh, in the United States, the allegation is that Twitter favors the left wing and doesn't let conservative voices come out. Remember, they banned Donald Trump. So he's going to reverse lifetime bans. He's going to look into shadow bans. He's going to look at uh, the number of bots on Twitter. He's going to look into the verification process as well. He's promised to change a lot of things, but what will actually change? Let's first take a look at this quick report. Elon Musk is now in control of Twitter, or as he likes to call it, he's now the chief twit. On the popular microblogging site with nearly 400 million users worldwide. According to several reports, the Tesla CEO completed his $44 billion acquisition of Twitter Inc. The world's richest man is now in charge of the struggling social network. After six months of public and legal wrangling over the deal, which saw much drama. On his first day as Twitter's owner, Musk fired some of the well-known top executives of the platform for allegedly misleading him. According to reports, this list of top Twitter executives includes Chief Executive Officer Parag Agrawal, Chief Financial Officer Ned Segal, Legal Affairs and Policy Chief Vijay Gade, and Sean Ejet, who has been General Counsel at Twitter since 2012. Reportedly, Hyderabad born Vijaya Gade was singled out by Musk and she was allegedly criticized for her role in content moderation decisions at the company. She was the key executive who made the decision to permanently ban former US President Donald Trump from Twitter following the infamous Capitol Hill riots. Musk's ownership is likely to bring immediate disruption to Twitter's operations. This is because many of his ideas for how to change the company are at odds with how it has been run for years. Musk earlier said he wants to ensure free speech on the social network, which is likely to mean loser content moderation standards and plans to restore some high-profile accounts that were kicked off Twitter for breaking rules, such as Trump. So, will Trump make a comeback on Twitter? A fake statement attributed to Trump was circulated on social media. In the purported statement, Trump congratulated billionaire Elon Musk and claimed that his suspended Twitter account will be back up and running by Monday. Earlier this year, Musk said that he would reverse the ban on Donald Trump. Permanent bans should be extremely rare and really reserved for accounts that are bots or scam spam accounts. I do think it was not correct to ban Donald Trump. I think that was a mistake because it alienated a large part of the country and did not ultimately result in Donald Trump not having a voice. I would reverse the permanent ban. However, the former US president has said he won't return to the platform. He has instead launched his own social media app called Truth Social. Twitter employees have been bracing for layoffs since the transaction was announced in April, with Musk floating the idea of cost cuts to banking partners when he was initially fundraising for the deal. Reportedly, some potential investors were told Musk plans to cut 75% of Twitter's workforce, which now stands at about 7,500 and expects to double revenue within three years. However, while visiting Twitter headquarters on Wednesday, Musk reportedly told employees that he doesn't plan to cut 75% of the staff when he takes over the company. In a post on Twitter, Musk reassured advertisers it will stay a safe place for their brands, adding that he doesn't want Twitter to become a free-for-all hellscape. He also said that he bought Twitter to try to help humanity. So he did it to help humanity.
How will Musk help humanity by taking over Twitter? Madhavan Narayanan, senior journalist with us on the show. Karan Varma, author, speaking with us today. I'm speaking with Prashant Roy, public policy and technology analyst. Welcome to all of you. Great to have you on the show. Karan, let me start with your point of view. In the United States, uh, yes. they're hoping that Twitter moves a little more to the center from left of center. In India, today Rahul Gandhi tweeted, congratulations, Musk. Please don't stifle the voice of opposition. So here, possibly, we're hoping, or some people are hoping, that Twitter moves on the other side. Is this too much expectation? I don't think this is on Musk's top agenda, is it? Look, Tamanna, uh, so far, uh, in, especially in the US, uh, Twitter was very clear that, especially under Jack Dorsey, they were very clear that we are left-leaning people. And he said it categorically. He never minced words about it. In fact, he went to the extent of saying that most of the Twitter employees are who are on the conservative side are hesitant to express their opinions. So much so that they were also seen in India posing uh, in front of the banner, smashing Brahmanical patriarchy, which was flagged off and uh, was criticized quite vehemently here. So they've worn their heart on their sleeves till now. And what they did with Donald Trump when they banned his account permanently on January 6th, after January 6th, uh, that was that was a treasonous act in in the voice of many. I mean, you cannot ban the president, sitting president of the United States, and allow the Taliban to voice their opinion. That was just not tolerable by any stretch of imagination. Having said that, with Elon Musk, I see a sensible person coming to the job. I see someone who's yes. talking sense. So, there are two things. <laughs> you think he's sensible? Now that's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Karan Varma saying Elon Musk is sensible. So you liked his, is it sinking in joke? I'll just, I'll just finish it. What do you think of it? What did you think of the introductory joke? One, 10 seconds, 10 seconds more. Two things, which, why I say he comes across as sensible is, he talks about the laws of the land. Because it's the laws of the land you have to abide by. You can't be a super editor to arbitrarily obliterate something, censor something and allow the other. And then cry wolf and say we want the uh, liberties that an intermediary has. So he's talking sense there and he's talking about free speech. Free speech is expressing opinions and welcoming them all okay. with certain regulations. So I, I see a sensible so he person. Talked Let's see how that okay, so, uh, Elon Musk is a sensible person who's taken over Twitter. It's going to improve for the better, says Karan. Madhavan, do you agree? Question: If he is following the laws, I I must ask if Elon Musk is following American law or Indian law, because Indian law, the freedom of expression under the Indian Constitution, very clearly does not encourage hate speech and stuff like that. There are even provisions for reasonable restrictions, even by the state. Forget about any. Whereas in journalism, as New York Times' famous slogan goes, all the news that is fit to print. So whether the platform should necessarily be uh, of one, a free for all speech or just a free speech, uh, which is, includes hate speech, is a matter of public debate. But if Twitter is a global platform, as it claims to be, in that case, it cannot be solely be governed by US laws, as far as law is concerned. And as far as uh, uh, Karan Anand is concerned, I must congratulate him because uh, Elon Musk is rarely accused of being sensible. <laughs> and uh, this is a rare instance. Well, uh, the fact is that if he's uh, cracking down on spam and bots, it's a good idea. But uh, I think Donald Trump's uh, case, Twitter had put out a very clear blog saying that it was because he was inciting violence and they quoted his tweet. And yeah, it was on uh, the borderline. And to that extent, um, if Jack Dorsey wore his uh, left leaning on his sleeves, there are some issues to be resolved there. But at the same time, everything from fake news to ugly propaganda to uh, abusive language has been there on Twitter. And I, I would think as an old fashioned journalist that the intent and purpose of free speech is not uh, uh, fake news. It is not it's misinformation. There has been a full uh, industry trying to spring up uh, to tackle disinformation and fake news. If you put all that into account, then let me go back to the early days on Twitter, which used to be that Twitter is the place, you know, Facebook is the place you went to uh, for, for people you went to school with, and Twitter is the place for those who you wish you had gone to school with. So it began with a tremendous amount of innocence, as 
banned Kangana Ranaut's account and many other accounts, to name a few. Most of them were right-leaning. So I don't think it makes any sense. Uh, it's a classic case of pot calling the kettle black when Rahul Gandhi says, uh, do not do not stifle the opposition. If anything, Twitter had tried to stifle the government in power, the right-leaning voices. And that has been the trend across the globe, not just in India. Everywhere. So you're hoping, so, you're hoping I, that changes, Karan? You're hoping absolutely. Iran changes? That. Absolutely. I think it can. It could not have gotten worse. Than okay. What now, so now we're, we're, so now we've come to what the debate actually is in the Indian context. I'm glad we're done with you know all of uh, the fluff surrounding it. This is what the debate actually is. Is Twitter going to change its point of view or its leaning as is perceived in India after Musk taking over? Madhavan, you want to quickly respond to that? I think Karan makes a very factually accurate point that uh, there has been a definitely uh, an attempt by Twitter in India to sort of uh, question some of the government's actions, but it's in the gray area because Indian laws as well as the practices and the culture of India are different from the US. And so in Twitter, let's face it, uh, in India, we've been having a very healthy culture in which both the left and right have been pretty strong on Twitter. So Twitter remains a very stimulating place and i like to uh, congratulate Prashantha for making a very important point. It's not just the user number that matters. Twitter you know, offers thought leadership to all of India. I know it for a fact that YouTubers come to Twitter, take points from me and convert them into videos. <laughs> I'm happy about that. And, you know, uh, and I'm happy uh, about the fact that the, some of the finest minds, and I'm not talking about journalists, they, they may not be the finest. I'm talking about industrialists, I'm talking about academicians, I'm talking about researchers, everybody's on Twitter. And to that no, extent... You know, you know Ma Madhavan, the youth is not on Twitter. No, I, I, I don't know how to put to it politely. They're, they're not no, no, on no. Twitter. No, no, no. I've made it very clear, Tamanna. Please remember, this is a very important lesson. We are in a squash court, I call it. In a squash court, the ball hits one ball, uh, floor, wall, but ricochets over all balls uh, floor, and then coming. Then comes TikTokers, YouTubers, Facebookers, everybody, and WhatsAppers. Everybody uses Twitter as some kind of a stimulation point from where they either modify, uh, oppose, or even simply rephrase in video what they learn on in okay, text. so it's the starting point. I mean, told my producer, please mention Snapchat because you know that's that's where the youngsters are. Prashanto, Prashanto, uh, you know, to the point that Karan is making, that Twitter will perhaps not be as aggressive or combative in India under Musk. Well, Musk has made it very clear that he will adhere to whatever the laws of the land are. And his purpose also is to make back his money. This is a business at the end of the day, not a philanthropic effort. Twitter stopped being combative as far as, uh, you know, uh, the right-wing voices or any, you know, if they were to take down Kangana Ranaut, etc., uh, there was major pushback between the establishment back. Now, for example, the one of the pushbacks that they did was a farmer protest-related hashtag, and there was a directive to take down an entire body of tweets with that hashtag, and that actually ended up hitting some of the, the BJP folks who were criticizing the hashtag but used the hashtag and so on. Now, that was a pushback that Twitter did because they said it was against the IT rules. It was against uh, Indian laws itself. You know, to give such a sweeping takedown thing, takedowns are supposed to be specific. But they got pushed back very hard there. So I, I think after that, that is after that, I mean, that was their centrist attempt. They have remained right wing and I'm sure we can agree to disagree on that. They're not right wing, but right of center because they really have very little option here to survive. It is not the left liberal side which is deciding law, legislation, and execution and implementation. Law enforcement has been very hard on Twitter. Law enforcement keeps visiting Twitter executives' homes. And that is one of the reasons why Twitter executives haven't survived in India. You know, there's it's rapid changes at the top, at the compliance level, at legal, at regulatory officers. Twitter is not a fun place to work in India. And a lot of the thing is because of the interaction and engagement that uh, the adversarial engagement that the establishment and law enforcement have had with it. All right. So Twitter is not a fun place to work in India. Well, Twitter executives are not surviving even in the U.S. right now. Uh, Poparag Agarwal has been shown the door uh, yeah. it, it, qu quite ruthlessly. If, if Elon is saying he is going to not fire 75%, that means 25% are 
on the chopping yeah. block. So no, big so changes. Just, what is, I'm quickly, as I wrap, and I, I'm actually out of time, but very quickly, one big change that you would all like to see. Madhavan, I start with you, and very short answers, please. I think I would love to see a, pay, a payment model or a, for content that is of high quality with a, a sense of filter and options that is more quality oriented okay. and not just blocks. Let people charge. Let people charge for good quality. Karan? Neutrality and following the laws of the land. That is what we need. That is what free speech needs to thrive. Okay. Prashanta, what do you want to see change? Edit button, a verification, bots, huh. anything specific? Yeah. So reduce bots, uh, absolutely, that's very significant, and transparency related to takedowns. We okay. would love to see that, and that's going to be tough in India. Right now, I'm seeing a Twitter trend, remove all blue tick verification. That seems to be the masses saying that why this, you know, special treatment for some with blue ticks. None of the blue ticks are going to like it, but I will leave it there. Twitter, anyway, hogs a lot of our mind space. Let's see if it continues to do so and keep up its relevance. I think that's going to be challenge number one for the new twit in chief. We're going to wrap it up right there. But thank you once again for joining us in Beyond the Headline. I'll be back same time, same place next week. I hope to see you then.